go big. This is a season where God is saying, don't hold back. Do not shrink back. Because the Bible says he takes no pleasure. He takes no delight in somebody who shrinks back. Now, you and I, we have the world before us. God has given us the kingdom. We have everything that we need. And I believe that this is a season today on the 1st of May. I declare and I decree big miracles, mega miracles. May is a month of mega miracles. If you believe it, say amen. So I believe that this is a season where God is literally giving you an open check. What is an open blank check? A blank check is where he leaves the amount open. And he's saying, son, daughter, write whatever amount you wish and you desire on his blank and open check. Come on, won't he do it? Yes, you will. So I believe the Lord in the spirit is giving you a blank canvas, is giving you a blank check. The Lord in the spirit is giving you a new opportunity. And he's saying, son and daughter, believe for big things this month. Because this is the month of Pentecost, of Shavuot. This is the month of Pentecost harvest. So I believe you and I, there's an opportune window, a window of time where the Lord has opened up and he's saying, go big, pray big, believe big, sow big, invest big, because I want to declare over you, this is going to be a life-changing month. This month of May, this is going to be a month of mega miracles, the outpouring of God and the harvest of the glory of Jesus. If you believe it, say amen. If you're with me today, say amen. Give some hearts and likes and share this on your wall. So listen, I want to go to the word of God. Amen. Let's go over to the word of God. Praise God. Let's go over to Hebrews chapter four. Now, this is a very familiar passage to many of us, but I want to talk to you today in the mighty name of Jesus. If you're with me today, say amen. Jesus. If you are happy to receive from the Lord, from the man of God, I want you to say amen. Now let's go over to Hebrews chapter four. And I just pinned it to the top. Somebody say, go big. Hebrews 4, 14 to 16. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens. Come on, somebody. Who here knows that whenever God tells you to do something, he's already done it. Whenever God leads you somewhere, the Lord has already gone before you. So here, Jesus, Yeshua, our great high priest, who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold firmly, say hold firmly, to what we profess, meaning whatever you confess, declare, prophesy, whatever words come out of your mouth, whatever you speak of, hold on to it firmly. Don't waver. Don't be tossing and turning. Don't go to the left and to the right. Whatever you speak of, because Jesus is a great high priest who has already gone before us. He's already broken through the warfare. He's already gone through the second heavens. He's already gone through all of the demonic nonsense and all of the dramas and the traumas. But because Jesus has broken through the second heavens, he is the anchor. He is the pioneer of our faith. He's the one who has gone ahead of us. Amen. So therefore, as you profess, confess, declare, hold firmly instead of a losing faith on what God said. Either God said or he did it. Either God's word is true or it's not. Let every man be a liar and let God be true. So here in the word of God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Here in the word of God, it says, hold firmly to what we profess. Now, let me ask you, have you been wavering? In your faith, have you been doubting the Lord? You believed, you were active, you received with great joy, but the word did not yet take fruit. And I believe God is saying, hold firmly to every word that has been spoken from the mouth of God. For as you declare it, you must then continue to expound upon it. So friends, don't give up. And here we go, keep reading. Hebrews 4.15. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, 
that as we are, yet he is without sin. Isn't that so beautiful? Let us then with confidence, say confidence, draw near to the throne of grace, Jesus. Somebody say, I'm drawing near. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in every time of need. I want to talk to you, friends. This is a season where God is saying, come boldly before me. I believe our weak prayers need to stop. Our shy, our childish, our skittish, our insecure prayers need to stop. I believe this is a season to pray bold prayers, to declare bold prophecies, to declare the very word of the Lord. Now, here's the thing, friends. You and I, apart from the grace of God, apart from Jesus, we can do no good thing. So you and I, in our humanity, in our flesh, we are sinners. But you see, the enemy wants to separate us in shame. The devil wants you to be filled with condemnation, manipulation, and lies so that you are not able to draw near. The Bible here is clear. Draw near with confidence. Come on, somebody. Like this is your moment. Draw near like this is what you were made for. You've been waiting all along, all year long. You've been waiting your whole life for this moment. So draw near. Take the moment. Take the opportunity of the lifetime while there still is lifetime and the opportunity. And here the Bible says, because Jesus can empathize, sympathize with us, because he is, was a human, and he would connect and relate to us in a way, and also because he has passed through the heavens. Amen. He has passed through the heavens. Therefore, let us now with confidence draw near to God. Some say confidence. Now, many people deal with insecurity. Okay, can I talk about this? Because when I was younger, uh, when I was younger, I dealt with a lot of insecurity, okay? I did not know who I was. I was growing in my identity. I was growing in my maturity, in my sonship. I was growing in the truth of who I was. And it was a battle because I had to renew my mind. I had to continue to declare the word of God and pull down uh, these strongholds and pull out these roots of these evil lies that I believed and I lived in torment for 18 years of my life. And even as I gave my life to Jesus at the age of 18, I had to work out that faith, work out my salvation. But I struggled with so much insecurity and even in my relationship with God, as I came to the Lord, I was an orphan. I was working in ministry, trying to earn his pleasure, trying to earn these good brownie points. I was trying to earn love from the Father, trying to earn. And if I missed one thing or if I missed a mark, I felt so guilty. And that's what an orphan spirit is. So when it came to the Lord, I was struggling with the orphan victim spirit mentality and with so much insecurity. I mean, of course, you know, so many young people today, I mean, many young people are experiencing insecurity. They compare themselves, constantly look at themselves and judge themselves, etc., etc. But security is having confidence in who God made you to be. I'm going to say that again. Security is having confidence in who God made you to be. There's only one you. You are an original. There's only one you. And even if it was you, the Lord Jesus would have come down from heaven to earth, gone through all the excruciating pain, torture, torment, and died on the cross, even if it was just for you and or I. If you're with me today, say amen. So here the Bible says with confidence. Other translations say with boldness. Come on. Who here knows that Apostle Peter, uh, excuse me, yes, Apostle Peter, when Peter was in jail, he prayed for the spirit of boldness to come upon him. Excuse me, uh, that's Paul and Silas, Acts 16. He prayed for a spirit of boldness to come upon him. They were threatening him. Do not preach in the name of Jesus. 
Don't be saying these words. Don't be gathering. Don't pray. Uh, just be quiet. Sit down. Stop being a loud Pentecostal charismatic Christian. You know, yeah, Jesus is cool as long as he's a teacher. Jesus is cool as long as he's a good motivational, seeker friendly TED Talk preacher. But you know what? When you start talking about the other stuff in the Bible, I don't know about that. But you see, they threatened uh, Paul and Silas. And they were in prison. And you know what happened? The fire of God fell. The spirit of boldness came upon them. Boldness came upon them. And they asked, Lord, fill us with boldness so that we would preach the word of God. So that we would continue to preach. And as signs and wonders, as evidence, would follow. Somebody, somebody say miracles are following my life. But you see, they were bold. They counted the cost. They counted the lives as nothing. Let me tell you, the church has lost their backbone. We got a big wishbone, but we have a weak backbone. What does that mean? That means all we want is we desire, we desire, you know, we fantasize and we dream and, you know, we ask God like he's some sort of vending machine, but we need a backbone, amen, which means we need boldness. We need to be girded. We need to be strengthened. We need to be empowered. So I believe in this season, God is saying, have confidence. Be bold. Pray bold prayers. Pray audacious, scandalous prayers that are going to shake the heavens and the earth. Somebody say, amen. Are you secure? Are you confident? Or are you insecure? Shh. I believe in the season, the Lord is saying, go big. Go big, friends. Go big. Dream big. Pray big. Prophesy big. So invest big. Believe for big. Because our God is a big God. We, our faith is not reliant on the signs of the times. Our faith is reliant on the eternal one. I'm going to say that again. Our faith is not reliant on the signs of the times. Listen. The signs at a time say inflation is skyrocketing and it's about to hit the fan. There's going to be more bankruptcies. There's going to be more uh, crashes. There's going to be more, uh, you know, mortgage bailouts. The banks are going to fail. So faith is saying that you operate and live from a higher level, from a higher dimension. Amen. I need you to pray right now because God is saying faith is contrary to the culture of the world. It is contrary to the culture. That's why we live by faith and not by sight. We live by faith, not by the signs of the times, but by the word of Jesus Christ, which will never fade and will never fail. Not even a tittle and a fiddle will be jotted and blotted out. If you're believing this, say amen. So here, my friends, I believe... We're in an open heaven season right now. The month of May is a season of harvest and a month of open heavens. If you believe right now, give us some hearts and likes and say amen. On Saturday and even yesterday, Sunday, and some of you, you were with us on our broadcast. But Saturday and Sunday, we went into the courts of heaven and literally corporately we corporately went up into the courts of heaven. And within that realm, within the courts of heaven, by faith, of course, we were there, our spirit man was there, and the Lord caught us up in the heavens. And I began to prophesy the word of the Lord, minister God's word in his heart from the courts of heaven. And the Lord began prophesying that things are coming to an end. I need you to hear this. And give me some hearts and likes. Build up the algorithm, friends. The Lord said that things are coming to an end and there are new beginnings coming forth. There's going to be turnaround, debt cancellations, indictments, lawsuits, expungements, releases, liberations, jubilee. In this month of May, there's going to be a jubilee anointing that's going to clear the slate clear the table is going to turn the tables that were against you in this month of May. 
in this season of Shavuot. If you believe it, say amen. And the Lord began speaking to me saying, go boldly before God and ask the Lord for something big. Come on, somebody. Does anybody have faith today? Come boldly before the Lord. Shika, rabba, rabba, rata, roka. And here, Hebrews 4, Hebrews chapter 4, the Bible says, let us then with confidence, with boldness, draw near to the throne of grace. Come on. You can be as close to the throne as you wish. You can be as close to the Lord, to the Father as you wish. But here it is. We are not bold or confidently drawing near by our own merits, our own works, our own stripes. But it's because Jesus is our high priest. Jesus has gone before us. Jesus is there and he is standing up for us, defending us, speaking out for us. Jesus is there and he has gone ahead of us as the pioneer to secure a place for you. Isn't it incredible? Jesus says, the Son of Man will, will go before you to prepare mansions on your behalf. God has gone before you. God has gone ahead of you. I'm prophesying to you right now. God has gone ahead of you. So why are we afraid? Why are we skittish? Listen, I want to prophesy. There's going to be some big moves you're going to make this month. You're going to make some big changes. This month, there's going to be some big, mega, ultra blessings that's going to come upon you that you're going to move into. This month, there's going to be a great realm and a great release, but it's according to your faith. It's according to your faith. You must be confident, be bold, and draw near. You must be confident, bold, and draw near. Amen. I remember, and the story's coming up here. I remember I was in Canada, I think it was 2018. I was in Canada and we were at this beautiful ski resort and Lance Wall now, Stacy Wesley Campbell, uh, Benny Johnson, Pastor Bill Johnson's uh, former wife, wife, they're all there. And I remember I had this prophetic dream and in the dream, in the dream, I was in the woods and I was in a log cabin and there was a gentleman passing out checks. Let this stir your faith. There was a gentleman in the dream. He was passing out, giving out checks. He turned to one of my friends and gave this person a $10,000 check. Turned to another person, gave that person a $10,000 check. Then he turned to me and he gave me I don't know what that is. Get off of me. And he gave me a $100,000 check. He gave me a $100,000 check in the dream. So boom, I wake up. I turned to my friend who was my videographer in the room at the time. I said, bro, I just had this incredible prophetic dream. Shandarabota Kora, bro. Well, guess what? That dream was maybe Wednesday or Thursday. And then I was in Vancouver, Canada area. And then I came back home. And I met the Campbells. I interviewed the Campbells. I interviewed Lance Wall. Now, that was my first interview I had with Lance. It was wonderful. Hallelujah. And even Benny Johnson. I had the honor of interviewing Benny Johnson. And you could probably still see some of those videos on the YouTube. Just YouTube, Ben Lim, Benny Johnson. Right after that, that was a Wednesday or Thursday. Right after that, I go home. And I preached it at my church in LA on that Sunday. And there was a gentleman there. He's obviously a benefactor. And he's obviously not a part of our congregation. So there was a gentleman visiting, a gentleman there, and I prayed for him. And this gentleman, boom, goes down in the glory of God. He's weeping, he's crying, he's so touched by the Holy Ghost. And when he comes back up, he gets up, he says, Pastor Ben, I, I feel moved in my heart, but I want to give you a check. And this man of God, this brother says, I want to give you a check. And he says, I want to write you a $30,000 check. Now hear me now. I seized the opportunity while it was placed before me. And I said, and so we emailed back and he said, I want to send you a $30,000 check. And I said, uh, well, sir, I'm going to be bold. 
I know you don't know me. I don't know you, but I'm going to be bold. I just had a prophetic dream literally a few days ago where somebody gave me a $100,000 check. And I wrote in the email, I said, sir, I believe this may be you. Would you possibly pray about giving us a $100,000 check instead of 30? I didn't hear back from him. I waited, I waited. I thought to myself, wow, Ben, you blew it. You blew this relationship. How dare you? What did you do? You sabotaged this. You're being too greedy. Uh, did you rock the boat, et cetera, et cetera. And so I was just, you know, I waited and I waited. I did not hear back from this man of God. Well, guess what? February 14th, Valentine's Day. My goodness. I believe this was maybe 2017 or 2018. February 14th, Valentine's Day. Boom. We received a check for 100K to our ministry. Somebody say, amen. I want you to say bold faith. Bold, radical, ridiculous, audacious faith. Does anybody believe with me today? I want you to say hallelujah. Give some hearts and likes. Why am I sharing this? Because Jesus was, Jesus was blown away by two people in the gospels, two types of people. The one with no faith, and the one who had great faith. And isn't it incredible? The one who had great faith was not even a Pharisee and was not even a Jew, one of God's chosen people. The one with great faith was a centurion. The one with great faith was a Gentile. So there's two things that truly amazes the Lord, and we see that. The Bible says, God is not pleased with those who do not have faith in him. So do you believe? And it's not just making up a vain thing in your imagination and you're faking it till you make it or you're wishing upon a star that something good will happen. No, faith is the reality of God. Faith is the word of God. We have faith in who he is and what he's spoken. And the Lord will release that word. According to your word, let it be unto me. So bold faith, bold prayers. I don't know about you, but I want the Lord to look, look down from heaven and say, wow, Ben, you're going big. You, you believe big. You're believing me for big. Do you know the Bible says the nations are like a drop in a bucket? The nations. What's the biggest nation by landmass? Maybe China, maybe Pakistan, or maybe even the United States, if you include Alaska, of course. What is the biggest? So the nations are like a drop in a bucket. Come on, somebody. Ask God for the nations. Go big. Dream big. Believe big. I believe this month there is a possibility an open heavens moment for you to go big. Don't hold back. Don't shrink back. Do not doubt. Believe in the word of the Lord and watch God move and watch God do it because he is faithful to his word. So I'm going to say amen. Now that word confidence or boldness, that word in the Greek is parousia. I want to say par parousia. And that word par asia, amen, confidence and boldness, par asia, what that word means is freedom of speech. It means freedom of speech. It means to be free. It means to be open, to be plain, bold, openly, and publicly. So it's like this. I turn to you and say, can I speak plainly? Can I be honest with you? Can I be open with you? I don't want to give you mixed messages. I I don't want to beat around the bush. I don't want to, you know, say something and I don't mean it. Parousia means to speak openly, publicly, boldly, confidently. Or how about this? You're speaking to a confidant, to a spiritual father, mother, and you have confidence that you can trust them. Kirabata. 
And because you have confidence in their character, that they are trustworthy. They're not going to throw you under the bus. They're not going to expose you. They're not going to, you know, use that as ammo against you. But because you have confidence in their character, hear me now. Therefore, you can be open with them. You can be open. We have confidence, not because of our character, but because of his character. We have confidence in his character. That if we draw near, we will not be rejected, we will be received. If we come boldly as sons and daughters, knowing who we are, that we are his children, knowing who we are, we're not orphans. The Father loves us. If you come boldly, draw boldly before the Father, because you know who you are. You know that this is your inheritance, this is your house, this is your daddy, this is your father. If you come boldly in the right spirit and the right attitude, then the Bible says, let us approach boldly before the throne of grace and you shall receive mercy. Someone say mercy. In every time of need, I feel the Holy Ghost. In every time of need, you will find mercy. There's always a way out. There's always a way up. Before Goliath, there was a David. Before the problem, there was a solution. Before the cancer, there was healing. Before darkness, there was light. Before creation, there was creator. God provided mercy, abundant mercy, everlasting, limitless, unending mercy for you in every single time of your need. Come on, somebody. Someone say, preach, Dr. Ben. So when you need a miracle, go boldly before God. When you need a breakthrough, shh, you need something to happen in your life today. Come on, pull on the Lord right now. I feel the pulling and the stirring. You need a healing in your body. You need a financial miracle. Pull, pull, pull. Pull on the mercy seat. Go before the Lord on the mercy seat. Pull, pull, pull. When you feel like you need a breakthrough, go boldly before God. Stay in that place, hidden under Psalm 91, between the cherub, between the cherubim angels, the chariot angels, and between the cherub in front of the mercy seat. Mercy, mercy, mercy. In every time of need, I feel the Lord. The Lord is about to obliterate every obstacle. The Lord is about to obstruct every spirit of destruction. God is about to scatter every spirit that's trying to come against you. There's going to be such an overflow, a release of recompense and breakthrough in this month. But it is contingent on you. It's contingent on your faith. It's contingent on your boldness and your confidence, your parousia as a son, as a daughter of God. I'm not going to leave this place until we see the fire of God. I'm not going to leave this place until I leave transformed. Joshua lingered in the tabernacle. He stayed longer. He stayed in the, oh, in the place, even though the Bible says Moses left and departed the tabernacle, but his protege, Joshua, the son of Nun, would linger in the glory of God. Come on, somebody. I'm going to linger until I'm transfigured. I'm going to linger until I get what I need. I'm going to stay here in this place, and I'm not budging. I'm not moving until I receive the download, the fire, the glory, the breakthrough. I'm not leaving this place until I leave different in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe it, and you're with me today, say amen. And God is saying, be bold, pray bold prayers, go big, do not shrink back in faith, in your flesh, do not be afraid, do not fear, for I am here, do not be afraid, for as I was with Moses, so I am with you, therefore be strong and be courageous, because I will give you the lands and the territories of the enemies of the Philistines, the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Ammonites, and guess what, even the gates of your enemies will become yours, and the Bible says, I will give you success wherever you go, somebody shout hallelujah, the Lord is about to give you massive breakthrough, but you must be bold. Be 
Confident. Ha ha. Ikaraba. You must be bold and confident. Somebody shout hallelujah. I feel the glory of God. You must be bold and confident. No more weak prayers. No more, uh, you know, uh, if God wills it, uh, no more questioning, no more doubting. I'll break that off. Be confident. If God said, go forth, go forward, move forward in the name of Jesus. He's your daddy. He's your father. He's your provider. He's the pioneer. He's the author. He has gone before you in the heavenly places. Hallelujah. To release your breakthrough, to release the glory of God upon your life. For the Bible says he will go before you as a pillar of fire. He will go before you as a cloud of glory. Oh, the sun will not send you. The heat will not deprive you. The elements of the air will not kill you, but God will cover you. He will be your cool by day and the shade of the sun. He will be the fire of God in the middle of the night when you're cold. Head up he will be your protection, your provision, your promotion. I feel the glory of God. Jesus, I am the God that he lived thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I took your sins and I healed your disease i am the lord your healer you are the god that he lived me you are the lord our healer you took my sins and you healed my disease you healed my disease this is the month er Remember what happened this month in May in the month of ER. The Israelites came to the waters called Mara, which means the bitter waters, the undrinkable waters. And they complained and they grumbled and they cried like the little cry babies. They are you little Christian babies with your little Christian diarrhea diabetes. And the Lord brought them to the waters and they began to complain. And what it Moses to Moses took a piece of wood and threw it in the waters and the bitter waters turned into sweet. Hear me now. The impossible is going to become possible. The undrinkable is going to become drinkable. Hear me now. What's dead and poisonous and toxic will turn into something life giving blessing and abundant. The undrinkable will become drinkable. Hear me now. The dead field will suddenly reap a great harvest. Come on, somebody. Someone say, preach, Dr. Ben. The dead field will suddenly become an abundant harvest. What was undrinkable will become drinkable. What was bitter will become sweet. What was dead will come back to life. And that's what happened in this month of May and this month of ER. Hallelujah. Where Moshe took the piece of wood and he threw it in the water, which stands for the cross. As long as you apply the cross, anything is possible. As long as you apply the blood, anything is possible. I feel the Lord so strong. Jesus, Jesus, big prayers, big blessings, big faith, big glory, mega, 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 ultra, ultra. And I believe in this season, the Lord is hearkening his people to go big, to be bold. Be bold, go big, go for it. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Uh, I'm just waiting for the time to be right. Uh, I'm just waiting for, you know, just the perfect moment. Go for it, my dude, my friends, go for it. Be bold. Have that pip in your step. Have confidence because he's the one who draws you near. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. We love because he first loved us. We cannot even draw near. Listen, we cannot even pray without his help. 
We cannot even pray without him. So I believe we're in a season right now. And I hope this bears witness with your spirit or I'm seeding faith into you. I believe we're in a season where God is saying, you're stepping into a reset. And here is a blank check. Here's a blank check. How much do you want? What do you want on this blank canvas? What do you want on this blank check? On this blank canvas? Don't limit God. Don't let your earthly carnal religious wisdom limit God. A blank check and a blank canvas. If you believe in someone, say amen. Bold, confident prayers. Because we have a high priest who has gone before us ahead of us. And he's seated in the heavenly realms. Go big, my friends. I know many of us, we've experienced some warfare from Passover to now. But the shaking and the breaking was necessary. And now it's speeding up again. It is increasing. Amen. So listen, in this open heavens moment, in this open realm of faith, I want to be moving in the priesthood of Melchizedek under the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe right now, friends, whatever you ask for in his name, my name, I will give it to you. It will be done, says the Lord. So whatever you ask in his name. So be big. Go big. Don't be ashamed. But, 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 you know, I sinned. But, 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 I don't have all my eggs in a row, my ducks in a row, my eggs in a basket. But, 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 but if you only knew, but you're a son and a daughter. And it's not dependent on you. It's dependent on the father. So be bold. Be confident. Be open. Because you trust in him and his character. Amen. So in this atmosphere of faith, as there is a swirl of angels, I want you to lift up your hands. Close your eyes. And let that vision, that word, let that dream begin to manifest and bubble up right now. Pray big, pray big, dream big, believe big. Come on, friends, I'm telling you right now, I declare right now by the end of the month of May, I know we just stepped into a new month, but by the end of this month, what sort of harvest are you expecting? How much of a harvest are you expecting? Amen. Lift up your hands, Lord. I thank you. God, I come in agreement. Jesus. I just heard the Lord say, Ben, you've been dreaming big. But now I want you to dream bigger. I want you to dream bigger. Jesus. Jesus. You've been dreaming big, but now I want you to dream bigger. How big of a harvest net do you want? How big of a boat do you want? How big of a house, mansion? Jesus, Jesus. I've seen four people raised from the dead. How many more do you want to see? I've been to 56 countries. How many more places do you want to go? So you received a 100K check five years ago. Is that going to be your ceiling or is that going to be your platform? What's next? What's more? There's always more. 
Dream bigger. Dream big. Father, I thank you. I can't even speak right now. I can't even speak. Jesus. In this moment, be bold. And here's the thing, friends. Bold prayers is not about yelling or shouting. There's a time for that. Bold prayers. Sometimes praying is not even speaking. It's just standing before God before the counsel of the Lord. It's just standing before the counsel of the Lord in the courts of heaven. Jesus. Somebody say hallelujah. Jesus. Come on, in this moment, go big. Believe big, pray big, have faith, confidence, and boldness. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Radical prayers. Radical prayers. Large kingdom vision. And if you could do it, it's probably not from God. I'm going to say that again. If you can do it, it's not from God. Because a God dream, a God vision will cost you everything. A God word will be beyond your networks, your gifts, your capabilities, your human giftings, your, your budgets, your banks. It's beyond. Someone say, I'm beyond. I just saw angels going, carrying large cargo. Elephants are coming. The elephants are coming. Jesus. I'm so wrecked in the glory. Caravans of camels are coming. So be big, friends. Go big. Before the throne of grace. I believe right now, in this moment right now, and as well, there's an open window right now. Go big. Go for it. I want to say one more thing. You know, like an airplane, an airplane, in order for the airplane to take off, you already know the airplane, if it's sitting, it cannot just fly right there. It has to have a head start. Chugga, 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 chugga. The airplane needs to get the engines rolling and it needs to have a head. And the bigger the plane, the bigger the runway, the longer the start. The smaller the plane, the shorter the start. Jesus. And I heard the Lord say that we are in a supernatural season right now where the airplane can get an easier head start right now. And hear me now. There's something in the air and the atmosphere right now where if the airplane takes a head start right now, you will have a quantum leap. Uh, some say, preach Dr. Ben. I, I see quantum glory. You can have a quantum leap in the glory. If you have a head start, if you begin to pray, if you begin to faith and seed and sow and believe and declare before the counsel of God right now in the courts of heaven, it will have quantum effect quantum results multiplicative exponential returns will come to you in this season in this moment because this is 
a, an open heavens moment, which is a portal of time that's been opened for the lifetime of the opportunity, for the opportunity of the lifetime. And if you begin to speed up, so invent them, boom, cha. Quantum multiplicative exponential grace will take place in your life. Someone say amen. Somebody say favor is my portion. And I believe that quantum grace is available for us right now. I'm telling you, ask big, go big before the throne of grace so that you will receive mercy in every time of need. Abundant, plenty, mercy. Go big, my friends. I beseech you. I beseech you. And all my 7M fam and all my avid followers, I beseech you. As a man of God, I have such a stirring right now. I have so much faith right now. The Lord says, go big. Go big. Believe big. Pray big. So big. Don't hesitate. Don't shrink back. Don't be ashamed. Don't compare from last year to this year, from then to now. It's not then. It's now. It's different. It's now. Masa karabrata. Quantum favor, quantum glory, quantum leaps. Jesus. Someone say, preach, Dr. Ben. You need to heed these words, friends. There's an opportunity. And do you know why? Remember, we are currently in accounting of the Omer. And up to the day of Pentecost, there was 500 gathered in the upper room. And after a period of 10 days, went from 500 to 120. But when the 120 was finalized, boom, the fire of God fell. So the door is going to get shut soon. The door to the ark. The limited time offer, that limited number. It's going to close and it gets shut very soon. And that's it. You've missed it. You missed it. So go big. Go mega. Go mega. Go ham in this month of May. Because when Pentecost comes around, that open window for change, for the cast your bread upon the water for a due time, we shall return to you. That's going to be closed by Pentecost Shavuot season. Which is the last Sunday of this month. May. So make the big radical. I prophesy. Radical changes. Radical changes in your life. In Jesus mighty name. Before the door closes. Before it's too late. Make the move. Make the shift. Make the change. Go big. Do not shrink back. Do not delay. Don't be attached. Don't be held back by a low-level familiar spirit. Make the change. Because something big is coming. And I don't want to miss out on my opportunity. It's like a, the California lottery. You know, there's a day... And, and maybe that's a bad example, but I, I'm trying to share this point. The California lottery, there's a last day for you to turn in your ticket numbers. And there's a day when the winner will be announced. So you buy, buy, buy all these tickets, wishing, hoping, believing that you're going to win something. And though faith is not a gamble, However, faith is risky. Faith is spelled R-I-S-K. So here you are. Before that day, do get whatever you can. Because winner, winner, chicken dinner, triple seven. Hallelujah. Are you ready for that radical shift and a great grace? In Jesus' name. If you received today, I want to say amen. 
Friends, I love you. Bless you. Go big. Believe big. Be bold. Be confident. Because he wants you to draw near. And he wants to give you mercy in every time of need. It's your portion. It's your inheritance. Amen. So if this word blessed you, give us some hearts and likes and share this on your wall, my friends. And consider giving us a like and a follow. Also consider subscribing. As well, you can follow me on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and here on Facebook. Rem reminder, uh, this week I'll be in Arizona. I can't wait. Uh, I'll be in Arizona this week. So come and see me if you are in the Arizona region. Next week I'll be in Palmyra, Lebanon, Pennsylvania. And as well, the month of June, we're doing tent revivals along Highway Route 66. Chicago, St. Louis, Tulsa, Kansas City, Amarillo, Flagstaff, Albuquerque, Los Angeles. The whole month of June, we're doing eight cities of tent revivals. Come on. It's time for the harvest. It's time for souls to be one. Will you believe with me? Route 66 revival the whole month of June. Amen. If you're interested in joining, you can go to route66revival.us. If you live in those surrounding cities, regions, come and be a part of what God's doing. If you want to, amen, be a part of the new breed, travel with us for a few days, a week, or a whole month, email us at root66revival.us. Amen. So thank you so much. Thanks so much. Thank you, Lord. I know I miss South Africa. Lord willing, I can visit September, October time. I really, really love and miss South Africa. Arizona will be in Mesa and in Scottsdale. So please... Go to my website, benlamglobal.com, and you'll find all the information. All right? We hope to see you. Come and say hello. Come to NorCal. Uh, believing for the right door to open, to host, and to have me. Amen? Well, bless your friends. Love you. Shalom. Happy May. Happy Monday.